Well, hello, my Root of Power people. Welcome to this week's episode where we are going to be talking about a very special Valentine's Day, or in this case, it's dropping the day after Valentine's Day episode. We are going to be talking about red flags that you should never, never, never ignore. So we're going to break down 15 things that are deal breakers that I can tell you are deal breakers, right? I have worked with many, many, many people who are coming out of toxic and abusive relationships, imbalanced relationships, shitty partners, whatever. And at least one of these red flags was present, but usually there are more and usually women spend a ton of time ignoring the red flags. It's not that you don't know, right? The women I work with always know that they are seeing red flags. What happens is we shove them down. We're taught to we're taught to give them another chance and we're taught that our love will save them and we're taught that we're rehabs for broken and cruel and damaged men and we're not. Now, if you're a dude, keep listening because I'm going to talk about some red flags that you may be doing. If you are gay, keep listening. I'm talking about some red flags that you may be doing. This doesn't mean that you are horrible or that your relationship is doomed, but it does mean that there is a problem or multiple problems in your relationship and it needs to be fixed or we need to admit that it can't be fixed. So I'll go through and I'll, I'll explain which ones can be fixed and which ones cannot be fixed. But let me tell you this, they all center, the ability for things to be fixed in a relationship has nothing to do with you unless you're the one doing these behaviors. If your partner is the person doing these behaviors, it is 100,000% dependent on them fixing these behaviors. Now, in order to fix these behaviors, they have to want to fix these behaviors. So we'll get into that. So before we do that, let me tell you about what I've got for you. Because if you've listened to any of these episodes, if you haven't, holla, what up, this is your first episode, Super Stoked you're here. If you listen to other episodes, what up, holla, Super Stoked you're still here. But you will know that... I have a free thing for you. Why? Well, outside of this podcast, which is free, uh, there's another thing that's free because I want to hang out with you and I want to have more of a relationship with you and I want to support you. So I developed a, I redeveloped, I tweaked a journal prompt that my coach, Rachel Friedman, gave me. She's fabulous. You can go follow her as well. Um, a journal prompt, a daily journal prompt. <laughs> How many times can I say journal prompt? A hundred thousand, apparently. A journal prompt for you that will rewire your brain to get what you want. So if you are living a life that you are not super jazzed about, that you don't wake up and you're like, fuck yeah, this is the best life, then you need this journal prompt because what it's going to do is it's going to start showing you where your little gremlin brain is acting up. It's going to start helping you see where you're getting in your own way. And it's going to start laying out a path, a day-to-day -day path of what you should be doing to get the life that you want. And it's, it's just a wonderful journal prompt. So download it. It's free from my website, livemyhappyhealth.com slash self journal. It is the self-coaching journal, but self-coaching journal was a long tag. So livemyhappyhealth.com slash self journal. It's free. You're welcome. Use it. Tag me on Instagram when you start using it at Amanda underscore chills. And I want to tell you about a thing starting next week. So if you have not signed up, uh, sign up today, right now, go, go do it. I am launching my signature program. The only way you can work with me on the interwebs is through this coaching program. Just making sure we're still recording because I get real nervous. So the only way that you can work with me through the internet is my coaching program. It is called Becoming Light. And what I'm going to teach you to do is to get rid of all the things that are weighing you down because I know how heavy it is to carry 
other people's expectations and other people's judgments and the weight of all the choices that you have not made for yourself that I know you want to make for yourself. It is so heavy to be out of alignment and to feel lost and to feel burdened. So this program is gonna teach you how to step into your life, how to create and sustain a life that you choose, a life that you make. We're gonna intentionally create a life that you love. We're gonna dig the rot out, we're gonna shift some relationships. We're going to learn how to set boundaries. We're going to learn what the hell actual self-care is. Not like fluffy self-care. I'm talking like dirty self-care. We're going to talk about dirty self-care, y'all, which could be rolling in the mud. I don't know. That's not really what it is, but it could be that. If Hey, live your dream. Who am I to tell you what to do? Uh, we're going to talk about like getting down and dirty, knowing ourselves, coming into alignment with what we want, and how to set standards and keep them. So we're going to talk about a lot of those things. You get a weekly training from yours truly. We'll have some surprise people dropping in and you'll have a weekly coaching call with me where you get personalized coaching. So if you want to work with me at all in any capacity, this is the only way to do it. And there are only 12 spots. So once they're gone, you're waiting another six months because I'm only running it twice a year. Why? Because I can, because I get to design it. So I'm going to help you design what you want so you can do more of what you want and less of what you don't want because that's heavy and that shit sucks. So you can sign up for that. You can get on the wait list at livemyhappyhealth.com slash wait list, or you can just go to the website, uh, livemyhappyhealth.com. Okay. Uh, so to the episode, to the episode. Okay. What are we doing? We are talking about red flags that you should never ever, ever ignore. Now, the thing about red flags is that some are like a little red flag where it's like, hey, this is something that you need to be aware of and you need to use this information to evaluate your partner and your dynamic in the relationship. And some red flags are non-negotiable. They're non-negotiable. You need to end the relationship if you are getting involved with someone who exhibits some of the red flags. We will talk about which ones. Here's why. Some of them, like um, someone who drinks, right? Not necessarily a red flag, but if they drink every day, Again, maybe it's not necessarily a red flag. So take this information and then apply it to your life, right? Now, if they drink a six pack every day, that's a red flag. I would encourage you to not get involved with someone like that. And you're gonna say, let me in there, they're so nice. And they only drink to calm down, right? That's the problem. That's the problem. They don't know how to use actual coping skills. So they get fucked up every day. So they drink a six pack every day. That's a problem. Oh, but my boyfriend drinks a six pack every day. I'm telling you, your boyfriend has a problem. If you drink a six pack every day, I'm telling you, you have a problem that you can get support with. Now, again, if somebody wants to work on it, then it is a conversation. So there are many, many layers to this. Some are non-negotiable. We'll talk about those. The ones that are negotiable warrant a conversation where you can look at your partner and say, hey, wonderful partner of mine, or hey, potential partner of mine, this is a thing that I'm seeing and I'm really concerned about it and I need you to work on it. I will not be in a relationship with you. I will not continue to be in a relationship with you unless you actively work on this. Now, here's a red flag. If someone likes you and says, I'm trying, but they're not watching a YouTube video or seeing a therapist or working with a coach or going to AA or reading a book, they're not doing shit. Okay, they're doing nothing. They are lying to you so they can manipulate you to stay with them. Because if they're not actually actually in real life taking steps to learn how to insert a new behavior they are doing nothing they are lying so they there is no trying to be nicer there is no trying to be sober there is no trying to be honest like they're either doing the thing or they're not so we need to be honest about what they are doing or what they are not doing people can change i hear this one all the time right but Amanda, maybe they'll change. Um, but people can change. Yes, they can in the way that theoretically I could build a rocket that goes to the moon. 
Am I going to do that in this reality? No. No. Why? Because I'm not actively building a rocket right now. So yes, people have the potential to change, but we want to be honest about what's happening in this reality. In this reality, are they actively, consistently doing the work to change? You already know the answer to this. So if the answer is no, we need you to be honest about it being a no. Why are they not doing it? I don't really give a shit. The point is they're not doing it. Oh, they're overwhelmed or they're so stressed out or it's just not the right time. It's never the right time to change something, okay? That's, you're either doing it or you're not doing it. You either give enough dams to do it or you don't give enough dams to do it. That is the reality. If somebody is not putting effort into something, they do not care enough to do the thing. At the end of the day, that's what it is. So yes, people can change. That doesn't matter unless they are actively doing the work to change. We are not fantasizing about potential. We are being realistic about what is literally happening, what is, sorry, adjusting the light, what is actually happening in this life, in your day-to-day, -day, so that we can decide if this is even the relationship that you want. Because you are the one who deserves to be happy. Now, they deserve to be happy too, but I'm talking to, I'm talking to you. You deserve the relationship that you want. So we want to not center them. We want to center you, which is a whole other podcast episode that now I should write down into. But we will talk about the red flags. I have yammered on long enough and teased you about red flags. So number one, someone who disrespects your boundaries. Now, I see a lot of rhetoric in the relationship world about how it's bad to test your partner and it's bad to take them through tests. And it can be, right? Everything is, eh, it depends. I actually recommend that every single one of my clients test all of their partners, test anyone they're looking to get into a relationship with. Not to say like, oh, I'm gonna set your shoes on fire and see if you get mad. Like, no, that is psychotic. Okay, and I say that as someone who works in mental health, like that is psycho. <laughs> what I mean is set a small, inconvenient boundary. So if they say, hey, you know, can we go, I'd like to take you on a date. Um, can we go Saturday at five? And you say, oh, actually, I, I have a thing at five. Can we go at seven instead? Now, if they blow up, if they try and guilt trip you, if they just disrespect that and say, no, we're going at five because that's how I planned it. Well, that's someone who doesn't respect you. They don't respect you. If you say, hey, I'd really like if we don't talk about work um, on this date and they spend the whole time talking about work, they don't respect your boundaries. If you tell them that you want to wait to get physical and they pressure you, they don't respect your boundaries. If you tell them anything to do or not do and they don't do or not do that thing, like they don't respect your boundaries. And that is a little red flag that I need you to pay attention to because it grows into a huge warning siren. If they can get away with a small boundary violation, if you hear nothing I say for the rest of this episode, they will get away with bigger boundary violations. Nobody starts with sexual assault. Nobody starts with violence. Nobody starts restricting who you see in your money. That grows from small violations. So if someone is disrespecting your boundaries, this is a huge problem, which is why we want to give them a little test, not a huge test. Like don't ram their car into a tree to see if they're gonna be mad about it. Like, no, don't do something like that. Change a time, cancel a plan, see how they react. If someone is in active addiction, this one can be a little hard to figure out, especially in the beginning. Um, and it's a little different if your partner develops an addiction into your relationship. So we're talking about just starting. If someone has a substance use issue, if they use mind altering substances, that is a problem. Now, if they like smoke weed once a month, again, this exists on a spectrum. So if they, 
if they drink socially and they get drunk once a month, like, again, this exists on a spectrum. Why are they using these substances? How often are they using these substances? And do they want to quit? Right? So if somebody smokes weed every day, but they go to work and they pay all their bills on time and, you know, they are a responsible adult, well, then it's your choice if you want to be with someone who's never sober and who can't handle life sober. And I don't say that to be judgmental, but if someone is never sober, something is wrong. It means they can't handle life sober, so they need some skills. Well, I just like the way it makes me feel. Why? Why do you not like being sober? That is a problem. What are you running from? What is your partner running from? We need to think about these things. Do you want your life to be controlled by whether they can or cannot get a substance? You need to think about those things. How much money are they paying, spending on this addiction? Do you want someone who's tied to that? Because addictions only grow. Tolerance increases with time and use. So if you're talking to someone and they have a substance use problem, walk the fuck away. Walk away. Drop them now, today, yesterday. Drop them yesterday. That is not going to work out for you. Now, if they're in active addiction and they are working on it, they're in therapy or they're doing NA or AA or some form of recovery, that's different, but you still need to make a decision on if you're willing to gamble your relationship on their ability to be in recovery and to be sober because people who have had an addiction in the past can relapse. It doesn't mean that they will. It doesn't mean that that makes them a bad partner. It just means that you need to understand what you are consenting to. If someone is in active addiction, deal breaker, walk away, walk away. They are going to, you are not going to have a good time. You're not going to have a good time with that person. If they develop an addiction, it is a conversation to have. Hey, this is not okay. I need you to, I need you to work recovery. I need you to work on sobriety. I need you to do the work, to do the things, to be sober. Absolutely. That's a conversation, right? If someone starts there, they're not your person because they cannot fully invest in a relationship with you because they're too, they're too wrapped up in addiction. And I don't say that as a judgment. They cannot fully consent to being with you because they can't consent to anything because they're not sober. That is a problem. Now, if you want to have a conversation with that person and say, hey, if you want to be with me, I need you to be sober. I need you to be in recovery. Well, hell yeah. Good for you for advocating for yourself and saying what you need. If they choose not to do that, we don't then say, oh, but I love you enough. Oh, but you'll change with time. Oh, but you'll love me enough to change. No, they won't. No, they don't. They have to do it for themselves. So if they are actively using, walk away. And I'm literally talking about weed as well. Walk away. If somebody smokes weed every day, walk away. They are not your people. And I may get a lot of hate for that, and I said what I said. If they develop an addiction, have a conversation. Set your standards. Understand what you are consenting to. If they have a history of addiction, that doesn't mean that you can have a wonderful relationship and they can be in recovery forever. That's absolutely possible. As long as they're doing the work, as long as you're doing the work. But understand that it is a gamble. And as long as you consent to that, hey, this is your life. Someone who doesn't allow themselves to feel emotions. If someone is only ever angry and they're never sad, or they're not allowed to cry, or they don't allow their kids to cry, that's a problem, right? That, that is a problem because what that means is they can't have difficult conversations with you. They can't process their emotions, which means they can't let them out, which means they're a ticking time bomb. You may be a ticking time bomb. If you can't sit with your emotions, you are a ticking time bomb. You're going to explode. Humans are pressure cookers. We have to release emotions. They are energy in motion, emotions. They have to move through us. We have to allow them to come up. Now, this is something that can be taught. I work with a ton of people who I teach how to feel their emotions because it's hard and it's scary and a lot of people really don't know. This is absolutely a skill that you can learn. 
absolutely a skill that you can learn. Respecting boundaries, the first one, is a skill that you can learn. All of these things can be learnable if they want to do the work. There is no convincing someone to do this work. They either want to do it or they don't. We are not begging people to meet us on the bridge. We're not begging people to be a good partner. They either want to do it or they don't. So if they don't know how to feel their emotions, if they shut down with emotions or if they get angry with emotions, not necessarily a deal breaker, but it can be depending on how extreme their reaction is. But this is definitely one to have a conversation about and to say, hey, like you and I can't have hard conversations. Like I, I notice that you really struggle to feel your emotions. Like I really need you to work on that because I want a partner who's fully invested. I want a partner who's able to say that they love me. And if you can't allow yourself to feel anything, you can't fully love anything. So that is a conversation to have. Are you willing to read a book? Are you willing to go to therapy? Are you willing to do this workbook, right? There are a million workbooks. There are a million coaches. Like it doesn't always have to be therapy, but it is a good option. So that's a problem. If they numb themselves with substances, right? Then we're back to the active addiction one. They can't handle life. You are going to feel emotions throughout your day. If you can't handle that, you cannot handle life and you are not a good partner. You're just not because you don't have the capacity or the skills. They don't have the capacity or the skills to be a good partner. That is learnable, but they have to be willing to learn. So if they don't allow themselves to feel emotions or if they don't know how, most people don't know how, that is a red flag that we want to pay attention to and have a conversation about. Uh, which leads directly into stonewalling. If every single time you try and have a conversation with them about something that's wrong or the way that you're feeling or just the relationship in general, and they shut down or they get angry or they escalate or they walk away or they refuse to talk to you, walk away. Walk away. If they're not willing to do the work to learn how to have those conversations, walk away. That does not get better. You are going to get yourself in a relationship where you can never talk about what's wrong, which means you are always swallowing your truth. You are self-abandoning. You are self-betraying. You are walking on eggshells. It is a horrible place to be. I know. I, one, was there, and two, have worked with a ton of clients who have partners who stonewall. Every single one of them ends up leaving the relationship because that is not a relationship. It's a relationship. It doesn't work. You cannot have a partner if they won't talk to you because that's the point of a partnership, communication. Mm -hmm. Now, again, if somebody doesn't know how to communicate, if they don't know how to, have, how to have those conversations, I also teach people how to have those conversations. I teach their partners how to have those conversations. So if they're not willing to learn how to communicate, they're just like, well, I'm not doing this right now. And that's every single time we talk to them, walk away. That is a red flag that will ruin your life. Walk away. That is not one to play with. If they have a history of cheating, this one is probably worth a conversation. Now, this one may take a little digging too, right? Unless they're cheating with you and then you get together, in which case you're going to reap what you sow. I don't recommend that. But if someone has cheated in the past and they do the work to figure out why and what was wrong with that relationship. So again, all of these are dependent on someone doing the work. Except for violence. If somebody is violent with you, no, walk away. Do whatever you need to do to shut that relationship down and leave. Violence is never, ever, ever, ever something that I recommend people work through, ever. Walk away. It may take time. That's okay. So if someone has a history of cheating or lying. Now, again, this exists on a spectrum, right? If they cheated when they were 15 and they're 30 now, that's a little different. If they have cheated on everyone they've ever been with, you are not special. You are not different. They're going to cheat on you. Why? Because a bear is a bear. We cannot make a bear a puppy. If someone has cheated in every single relationship they've had, you are literally not different. They will cheat on you. If someone has lied to every single one of their past partners, uh, they're going to lie to you because that's who they are. So we think like, oh my God, we'll change them and they'll be different for me. And if I love them enough and, oh, uh, no, 
you're not different. You're not special. They'll do it to you. And you're going to pretend to be shocked. Oh, I, I never thought they would do it to me. Because you were lying to yourself the whole time, which is why we talk about these red flags. See them for what they are. Decide if this is something you want to engage in, not something you want to change. Because people don't have to change. They don't have to change. So you either want these qualities or you don't. Now we can have a conversation about them and say, hey, you've cheated on all of your partners. Uh, that makes me a little nervous. It makes me a lot nervous. That's not okay. I would like you to talk to someone about that. I would like you to figure out why. Have you, have you worked to change that? Here are some rules that I need. Like you don't um, spend time with your preferred gender, like your, whoever you're attracted to, like past nine o'clock. You don't, you know, whatever. Whatever rules you feel comfortable with, you can talk about and they can agree or not agree. And then you have to decide what to do with that information. Uh, so if they don't believe in treating mental health, if they think therapy is a joke, if they think personal development is for losers, if um, they think reading a book is stupid, like, hello, that's a red flag. <laughs> that's a red flag, especially if you are engaged in personal development. And if you're listening to this podcast, you, hello, <laughs> hello, it you. What it does over time is it creates like a really wide gap between you and your partner. So if you're growing and your partner's staying the same, I promise you what you think is going to happen is that you'll pull them up and you'll inspire them. That's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is you will hit a ceiling and they will pull you back down because your growth is scary to them. So if you are into growth and you're working on your career, or you're working on your next goal and they have no goals, they have nothing they're working towards. You are not a good match. I would, that is a deal breaker. If you are growth centered and they are stagnant, you are not going to pull them up. They are going to pull you down. Go find someone who's also growth focused. Here's a really sneaky one that I see a lot and is a pretty good indicator of a red flag. How do they talk about their exes? Is every single one of their exes a psycho? Is every single one of their exes a bitch? That's someone who doesn't take accountability for their role. Now, if they say something like, yeah, you know, they were really an asshole and we were not a good match. That's a little more nuanced. But if they're like, oh my God, they were such a psycho. Why you got a history of dating psychos? Uh, the common denominator is you, boo. So we want to think about that. How do they talk about their partners? How do they talk about their parents? How do they talk about their exes, their kids' parents, if they have them? Like, can they co-parent? If they can't, why? Sometimes one partner is stable and the other partner really is difficult to deal with. Okay, super legit. We just need to dig into that dynamic. But if every single one of their partners is a crazy psycho bitch, um, that's a red flag. And I would encourage you to drop that relationship like a hot potato because you are going to be the crazy psycho bitch next because they haven't changed. They haven't done the work. They're just going to make you crazy. <laughs> that's not okay. If they violate your privacy or they're jealous or they're possessive. Now, this can be a really sneaky one where they can say like, everyone in the past has hurt me, so I need access to your phone at all times. No. A partner going through your phone is a red flag. A partner asking to go through your phone is a red flag, but a partner who does it behind your back is a bigger red flag because they're not asking for your permission. They're being sneaky. That is not okay. I don't care what kind of history they had. I don't care who cheated on them. I don't care. I don't care. That is a red flag and it is a deal breaker. They do not respect you. They do not respect you. If they're allowed to go through your phone, but you're not allowed to go through theirs, why do you think that is? Deal breaker. Goodbye. Someone who puts a tracker on your stuff without your permission, that is not okay. If they get mad that you're not up to your normal routine, if you're not allowed to go hang out with your friends, if they start telling you your friends don't even like you, 
I hate them. They don't like me. They don't like us together. They have a really big problem with us. Again, all of these things start out so small and they grow and they grow and they grow. So if they violate your privacy, if they're jealous, if they're possessive, I would encourage you to just walk the hell away because that is really hard to overcome. Not that it can't be done. If you want to have a conversation about it, again, live your dream and say, hey, I'm allowed to do what I want within reason, right? Obviously, you want to follow the rules of your relationship, but you're allowed to spend time with your friends. You're allowed to go places without them. You're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to take longer to come home from work. You're allowed to do things without telling them. You're allowed to do all of those things. And if you feel like you're not allowed to do those things, I would seriously examine your dynamic because that is possessive and that is not okay. It's not okay. If they tell you that they hate your friends and family and they start isolating you from them, if you only ever hang out with their friends and family, that's a problem. That's a problem. Now, if your partner is, if you're white and your partner's black and your family is racist, well, yeah, okay, that makes sense that you wouldn't spend time with your family. But if there's not a, a good reason, if they're making up, well, they don't like me. Well, why don't they like them? Are they an asshole? Okay, well, there you go. So we want to examine, do the people in our life even like my partner? Do they like this person that I'm talking to? What do they think? Because sometimes, a lot of the times, people in our life will see things that are our own blind spots. And we want to really critically think about those and say, oh, is is there something that I'm missing? Are they seeing things that I'm not seeing or that I'm ignoring, right? Which is why we're talking about all these red flags. If they... Uh, here's one that's kind of on the other end of the spectrum. If they make you responsible for their happiness, I could never live without you. If you left me, I'll kill myself is the most manipulative, unfair thing for someone to say. Um, you're, you're the only reason I'm still here. I just, I'm not, I wasn't happy until you got here. What have you been doing every single day in your life? Been miserable until I got here and I'm the one that saves you. If someone puts you on a pedestal, One, that's usually an indication of a trauma bond and they need to work through that. Two, they're not being realistic. So they're setting themselves and you up for failure because that's not fair. You're not a messiah. You're not their savior. You're a human being with flaws and some effed up shit that you're working through because we all are, we're all human, but they need to really see you for who you are and you need to see them for who they are. So if you are the sole reason that they are happy, if they put you as their ride or die for happiness, Every other thing in their life is miserable. Okay, there's a reason. It's because they're not doing the work to change their life. So it can feel really good. It can feel like an ego boost. And you're like, oh my God, I am saving this person. I am working for them. Like it's called a savior complex for a reason. But it's a red flag. Okay, you should not be your partner's everything. You shouldn't be their best friend and their confidant and the only person they talk to. Like that's not okay. You're not supposed to do that. We are supposed to have a community of people. Now, if they're working on building it, again, all of these things are dependent on if they're working on them, except for a few of them. If they don't believe in treating mental health, well, we'll talk about them at the end. But a lot of these are dependent on, are they even doing the work? If they're working on making friends and they're working on getting a, a job that they like more or pays better or whatever, if they are um, if they want to move because they hate this town and then, okay, they're doing the work at least. That is exciting. If they're doing the work, red flags can be negotiable. If they're not doing any work, they are non-negotiable. They are red flags, leave. Red flags don't mean, ooh, carnival, go play. Which a client said to me the other day that I just like died about, it was hilarious. So like, I didn't literally die, otherwise I'd be a ghost here talking to you. Um, But I died figuratively. Uh, Where are we at? Ah, (laughs) here's one of my favorite ones. If they slam cabinets, countertop, doors, car doors. If they slam things when they're angry, they are telling you how much they want to hit you. Leave. 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 You will resist leaving because it's not that bad yet. And they only did it when they're angry. And they may have said they're sorry. They're not sorry. They don't slam things normally. They don't break things normally, and I would be willing to bet they only break your things. 
or they only break things that are important to you. They're doing it to threaten you. They're doing it to scare you. It is violence. That is violence. They're telling you how much they want to put their fist through you, through your face, not the wall. And they don't start there. They escalate there because they want you to shut up. Leave. Do whatever you have to do to leave. That will only escalate. And there will be a day where they hit you. And if they are already doing that, do whatever you have to do to leave. It's okay that you've stayed this long. Get out. That one is a absolute deal breaker. If they are violent with animals, leave. Leave. It's not worth it. It will not get better. You cannot explain it away. You cannot make them understand. You can only leave. There is no other option. If they never take accountability, or if they only do it after they're caught, or if they truth drip, which means you caught them. You know someone is lying about something. You say, I saw you at the mall with Kathy. And they say, oh, I wasn't at the mall with Kathy. And you have a picture. They say, oh, I was there shopping for Christmas presents. And you say, no, I saw you kiss her. And they say, oh, yeah, but she's just a friend. And you say, no, I know you've been seeing each other. And they say, oh, yeah, but that's truth dripping, right? That's someone who honestly thinks you're a dumbass. Right? They think you're stupid, which is why they're lying to you in the first place. This episode ended up like a lot more angry than I thought it would because these things are not okay. You deserve better. You deserve a partner who is kind and thoughtful and considerate and who's honest. Right? You deserve these things, which is why these make me so angry. Because you deserve better. And you're never going to get better unless you stop accepting red flags. So someone truth drips if they never take accountability, if everything is your fault or if something never happened. That's called gaslighting. Um, well, I only did that because you did X. I only went through your phone because you were quiet. I only said that because you said this. I didn't even do that. Are you sure I did that? I never did that. That doesn't sound like something I would say. You're not remembering correctly. Maybe you didn't take your meds. Maybe you need meds. You're acting crazy. That's someone who doesn't take accountability. That is a red flag. And that is one that I would, I would categorize as non-negotiable. Like that is a red flag enough to break off a relationship or to not even get in one in the first place. Usually you can tell that one kind of early. So if you tell them that they did something that hurt you and they say, well, I'm sorry that you feel that way, uh, that's not taking accountability and it's a red flag, right? That doesn't get any better. So I would, I would encourage you to just cut shit off for that one. They are, because how can you have a conversation? Like you can't fix something in the relationship because sometimes they do something wrong. Sometimes you do something wrong and we have to take accountability in order to fix that. But if you can't take accountability, you can't fix it. Do you see where the problem is? If someone is hot or cold, if they're super, super, super into you and then they ghost for three or four days, they don't care about you. They're busy with other things, probably other people. That's a problem. You want someone who is invested in you consistently. If they're too hot, too fast, right? This is the next one. If they love bomb you, they're obsessed with you. You save them. You're their everything. They love you and you met three hours ago two days ago, three weeks ago. You're talking about getting married. You've known each other for a month. Sometimes that works. My parents actually got married three months after they met. What? <laughs> Bananas. But it worked for them. They are the outlier. They are the minority. So if someone is love bombing you, they are just, you're the most perfect thing they've ever seen. And you're the smartest person they've ever met. You're the prettiest person they ever met. And you're the handsomest person they've ever met. And that's not real. That's not real. That level of intensity is not real. So we want to examine that. Now that is one to have a conversation about. Hey, like you're getting really intense way too fast and I'm not comfortable. I'd like to take it slower. Okay. Now we come back to, do they respect that boundary? Or do they say, no, you're everything to me. Marry me. I bought a ring yesterday. 
what? <laughs> no. God bless. No. So a lot of these are conversations. And then you're going to tell if, number one, they respect your boundaries. Huzzah! This is very exciting. Number 15, if they lie. Oh, the liars. Red flag. Let them go. Let them go. Deal breaker. Goodbye. Goodbye if someone lies. Why are they lying? Because they want to get away with it and they think you're an idiot. And they will continue to lie. Like, why would you want a partner who you have to constantly assess or figure out if they're telling the truth or lying? Like, oh my God, that's so exhausting. You deserve better. You deserve someone who is honest and kind and respects your boundaries and works on themselves and values your privacy and values you as a human and understands that you're flawed and you're doing your best and they're doing their best. Like those are all things that you deserve. Yep. I guess we should do a green flags episode. I will do a green flags episode as well. So the red flags, we'll go over them one more time. If they disrespect your boundaries, if they are in active addiction, if they have a substance use problem, walk away, walk away. They are not going to be a good partner. If they don't allow themselves to feel emotions or if they don't know how, that one is more of a conversation. Hey, I need you to work on yourself. I need you to process these things, whatever. You can absolutely learn how to do that. You can also learn how to be sober. So again, if you wanna have a conversation, say, I really like this person. I think if they were sober, we could have a good partnership. Okay, super dope, talk to them about it. If they are stonewalling you, if they refuse to have a conversation about anything that's wrong, walk away, walk away. Deal breaker. Goodbye. They are not going to change that. But again, if you want to have a conversation, they work on it. Hell yeah. For me, walk away. If they have a history of cheating or lying and it's recent, goodbye. If you're the person they cheated with, bro, you are going to get what you deserve because you asked for this. Like, karma's a bitch. <laughs> it's going to happen to you. And when you're surprised, I hope you remember this episode and you're like, well, Amanda said that. And I'm going to be like, mm -hmm. yep, I sure did. If they don't believe in treating mental health, deal breaker, goodbye, goodbye. Because that means they also don't believe in growth. That doesn't mean they, that means they don't believe in taking accountability. It means they don't believe in like changing their life. Okay, those people are probably miserable. No, no thank you, deal breaker. If they call their exes psycho, crazy, bitches, usually a deal breaker. I can't tell you how many women I deal with with that was one of the first red flags that they didn't even see because they wanted to be different. They wanted to show them that they can love them and they're not like them. Mm -hmm. Does that sound familiar? Mm. Deal breaker. Goodbye. If they violate your privacy or they're jealous or they're possessive, deal breaker. Goodbye. Now, if it's not super bad, you may have a conversation about it and say, no, I'm actually, I'm going to do this because I want to and I don't need your permission. Or, hey, I want more freedom in this relationship. Again, most things can be worked on. If they tell you that they hate your family and friends and they start isolating you. If they tell you that your family or your friends hate you. Huge red flag. Huge red flag. No. No thank you. If they make you solely responsible for their happiness and well-being. A lot of people will actually do this one unintentionally. So this one is more of a conversation to have. Like, hey, I need you to have other friends. I need you to have things that you like. I need you to have a life outside of me. Absolutely reasonable. If they slam cabinets, countertops, doors, break things, leave. If they hit you, leave. If they hit your animals or your children, leave. Now that is complicated, right? I understand that that is complicated. I have worked with women in that situation. Start making a plan. There are many, many, many resources to help you. I will link a domestic violence shelter hotline. Start making plans. You do not have to stay, even though it's been whatever amount of time, even though you have kids together, even though your lives are intertwined, you do not have to stay. You can go. The first sign is usually them slamming things, hitting something. That is the time to leave. If they violate your privacy, oh, we already went to there. Hang on. Ah, sorry. If they never take accountability, or if they only do so when they're backed into a corner, deal breaker, goodbye. Goodbye. That takes so much work to undo. Goodbye. 
if they're super hot and cold, like they're really, really into you and then they just ghost for days and then they'll show back up and they're super into you. Like, no, bitch, goodbye. We want someone who's consistent and who sees our <laughs> value and worth the first time. That's what we want. If they love bomb you, if they're moving way too fast, if they're too intense, like that one's more of a conversation and then see where it goes from there. If they lie to you, deal breaker. Bye. Bye. No, thank you. Whew. Okay. This ended up being a long episode. I hope that those are helpful. Is there one that you've done? Is there one that you recognize where you were like, oh, oh I feel super called out. Like, oh, okay. Well, listen, I see you. I was you. I work with women like you. Literally, my group coaching container is made for you to no longer do these things. So if you want to sign up, I only run it twice a year. It's capped at 12 women. Um, LiveMyHappyHealth.com slash waitlist. That will get you on the wait list. And it always opens to the waitlist first. So do that if it calls to you. And if not, like, stay on I hope this episode was helpful for you and, you know, live your dream. Um, let me know your feedback, though, on Instagram. I mean, if you want to, but it would be helpful if you did. So at Amanda underscore Chills, which one of these were you like kind of surprised by? Which one of these are you like, mm, but I've done that or I do that now. Okay. Super legit. I'm glad that you got the insight. If you're on YouTube, let me know in the comments. Uh, okay. Y'all go have a beautiful day and remember, accept nothing less than your standards. That is how you get the life that you want. Okay. Y'all be good.